Welcome back to the channel. The last video I did on this 79 GMC Dually, I fought off a swarm of wasps. I left this charging all night. <gasps> it's got wasps in here. Oh yeah, like legit wasps. Oh dang. Oh dang. Dealt with a ridiculous Florida lightning storm. Uh, Jason, oh my gosh. I'm gonna go inside. And burn out the starter for this old truck. Dang it, dude. But we were able to get it fired up for the first time in who knows how long. And now I want to take this thing around the block. Now, if you look here, there are three mounting bolts where the starter goes. The previous owner broke a bolt off in this hole, and I had to drill it out, tap it, put a Healy coil in to make this work. But we have a solution. This is the stock starter that came off of the motor. And you see here, these are the mounting holes, and they are caddy corner to each other. This is the new high torque starter from Summit Racing, and these mounting holes are directly across from each other. So I think this is gonna alleviate our starter issue. So let's throw this thing in and see if we can fire the truck up again. Hey, first we're gonna clean this out just a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and chase these threads too. I'm not, I don't think these have ever been used right here, but I'm sure there's a bunch of dirt and stuff in there. You guys remember this, the magical button? Oh, would you look at that? I don't need no shimming at all. All right, uh, we're gonna get the fuel lines hooked back up. Let's see what happens here. Nothing. All right, so I just added the fuel can back into the engine bay. The last video, I made this like temporary fuel system and it seemed to work. Um, but you know what? I blew into the fuel tank from up here and I was getting bubbles in the back. So, uh, I mean, maybe we just got some bad gas. It's probably a dumb idea. PSI for our oil pressure. Oh, shut her down, shut her down, shut her down. Spewing gas everywhere. I'm gonna fire it up again, see if we can figure out where that gas was coming from. All right, Dan. Well, it's coming from the fuel line that's going to the the gas tanks. Let's hook it back up, man. Dropping that idle down. All right, let's fire it up again. really good oil pressure I gotta figure out how to get the coolant temp sensor plugged back up then it's not reading accurately at all I think that's it right there looks like we got a transmission cooler line leak gosh it just sounds so good all right well I think we got our fueling issue figured out got our starter issue figured out let's shut this down See if we can't get our coolant temperature gauge to come around. All right, Dan. Well, I can see the coolant in there now. Uh, couldn't get the gauge to come back around. Not really too concerned about it right now. I am really happy though with how this thing is running, dude. It runs like, it runs like a champ. Turn our key on here. Push button start. Well, that was weird. All right, now let's start fooling with our steering. Okay, so the Hydro Boost is working.
All right, put it in reverse. Well, would you look at that? Put her in drive. That's smooth. Oh, brakes work. <laughs> yes, dude. I'm gonna grab my voltmeter, see what kind of uh, volts we're putting back into the battery, if anything, and then uh, grab the boys and take this thing around the block for the first time uh, since I've owned it. Listen how smooth that is. 12.2. Hold it strong at 12.2. It's putting very, very little back into the battery. I'm okay with that. Uh-oh. Really dangerous to open. This thing is falling apart. All right, let's try that. It's not good. How do you go from running great to not starting? It's definitely a fueling issue. Oh, let's give my battery a break before I kill it. All right, fuel system's fighting me just a little bit. So I feel like we're getting fuel inconsistently. Fortunately, I found this guy in the, uh, on the driver's floorboard and uh, it seems clean enough. So I started to pour some fuel down here and keep an eye on this clear filter so check this out <clears throat> all right we'll fire it up nothing also uh don't try that at home see it's just it's not pumping anything like it'll pump for a little bit and then that's it. Well, as you saw, the filter would get uh, a couple of pulses from the fuel pump, but it's not getting fully full, fully full. So anyway, I think we got a bad fuel pump. I think it's wore out. It's been sitting for a while, but uh, I thought ahead because I kind of figured that was the issue. And I got this new fuel pump from Summit Racing. We'll throw that on while the battery charges up. And I'm gonna say it again, hopefully we'll take this thing around the block. I don't know, it doesn't look likely. Got a new fuel pump in. Got a new fuel line run as well up to the carburetor. We just backfilled the fuel line down to the fuel pump. Let's go ahead and put some fuel in here. You kind of see the fuel filter in there. like it's flooding a little bit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. She's flooding out. Getting a lot more action on the clear fuel filter though, which is real nice. She flooded. Nope. Yeah. I think our coolant temp sensor came around. Maybe.
Come on, baby. We got plenty of fuel coming through that. All right, let's shut it off. All right, gonna get this. Heck yeah, look at that nice fuel flow. There it is. Heck yeah, dude. Got a nice idle going on. Looks like our coolant temp sensors come back around. Listen to this sucker. All right, let me get this dually out of the way, take this thing around the block. Let me see if the kids wanna come. I got the boys with me, we're doing the first, first drive in the old square body dually. Dad. Oh, it's a lizard skeleton. Dude, look at that. Wait, what? I just found that. It's a lizard? Yeah. yeah. Here. Are you ready? Here we go. Why? Give me it back. Boys, no fighting, please. Pretty straight. A little nervous taking it up to speed right now. I do have uh, insurance on the truck, but I haven't registered it yet. And the tires are trashed, dude. They are dry rotted and just not good. They're old. Hey, speedometer works. We're going 35 miles an hour. That's as fast as I want to take it right now. Oh, we have like no brakes either. Oh my God. I should have tested that before. <laughs> we got enough brakes, let's say that. I don't think we got any fronts. I think it's only rear. can bud I don't want to do that right now maybe when we get some miles on it after it's been running for a while then we can start fooling around with that it sure is what do you think of it do you think it drives good yeah it did oh yeah there's no brakes dude I'm like all the way to the floor we're just gonna cruise back to the house. Work. All right. Good, what do you boys think? Great. Good first drive? Yeah. Sweet. Success. Successful first trip around the block. Let's get you a gauge update here. So again, we're sitting at 12 volts, which is okay. 30, just over 30 PSI on the oil pressure. We're under, we're probably about 200 on the coolant temp sensor. Uh, my clock still doesn't work, which is kind of bummed out about. Speedometer works, which is awesome. And uh, I do believe the uh, fuel gauge works. I just put, I don't know, a couple gallons in the right hand tank. So it seemed to move the needle a little bit. This thing actually drove really good. Let me show you why I don't really want to go too fast right now. Look at these big old cracks and bubbling in the tire, man. I could feel this tire is just about to blow out right there. And it's just all dry rotted. All of the tires are like that. So I'm debating on either getting new tires for the truck or possibly getting new wheels for the truck. Swung by my storage unit and actually picked up the old takeoffs from the uh, OBS dually. So I'm gonna throw these on real quick. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and try to bleed some of these brakes. Uh, we probably got air trapped in the system when I popped the master cylinder. I noticed that the uh, reservoir was a little low, so I'm thinking to suck some air in there. That's why we got some spongy brakes, but you know what? We got some brake action, just not enough. Let's get these old wheels off, throw these newer old wheels on and see if uh, we can't get this thing to stop a little better and take it up to, uh, what, like 45 miles an hour? That sounds about right. That sounds good. Yeah. 
I haven't bled brakes in a while by myself. And uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, I think I forgot how to do it. But Lord's not here, the kids aren't here, so I'm trying to do this on my own quick. That's my little uh, setup there. I got a bottle full of brake fluid, just kind of suspended right there, hooked up on the bleeder valve. I already cracked this one open and uh, cycled the brakes a few times, got some old dirty fluid out of there, hoping I got some air out of there. Like I said, I don't think there's anything wrong with the rears, I think it's the fronts, but I'm gonna repeat that process all the way around and see if those brakes come back around. Let's get these wheels on. Oh gosh. Well, my little bottle setup thing wasn't working like at all. So had to shift gears here. <laughs> Got a new technique. So, you know, pumping the brakes about 10 times. Getting a lot of pedal feel back, which is really nice. But uh, let me see if I could do this with one hand. I got my uh, old painter's extension here and a piece of wood. So I'm putting my piece of wood up on the steering wheel and I'm not gonna be able to do this with one hand. Hang on, there we go. Just wedging it in there. Keeping good pressure on that pedal there. Then I'm running over here. Still got the bottle set up. Just crack her open. No bubbles coming out of this side. Just wrapping up on the passenger side. Got all the bubbles out. Doing the driver's side next. Guess what? It's Florida. It just started raining. Dad, come at. Dad, gum. Them OBS wheels look good on that square body. Definite upgrade. Got to clean them up though. Now before we take us around the block, I'm gonna put a strap on the hood because it's a little crunchy. It's a little crunchy. That's okay. Uh, but I don't want it to, you know, open up when we get up to speed. What's up, bud? All right. Good deal, bud. What do you think of them wheels on that dually? Look good. Taste it? Yeah. It's good. It's like a Jolly Rancher. It does taste like a Jolly Rancher. There we go. Well, that's not going anywhere. Key on. Push button start. That was weird. All right. Got to roll our window down. this over here the front passenger side caliper is uh, she's sticking a little bit oh the brakes are much better oh, I can't wait to clean this truck out <laughs> there's so much stuff in here Get around this corner and see what kind of brakes we got. All right. A lot more than we had. Still not great. <laughs> not gonna lie. Pulling to the right real hard. Yeah, she pulls to the right super hard. We got some, we got some stuff to dial in here. All right, let's see what she does. First time on the big boy road. Got to watch that hood. Going 55 and I'm smelling brakes. All right, let's get her back to the house. What do we got? Oh, 340 degrees, 350. All right, what do we got over here? At 98, 
90, 100 degrees, call it 100. Yeah, she's not coming undone. So I'm gonna pop that caliper off, try to push the piston back in, do some lubrication, see if I can't get this caliper unstuck. But it drove pretty dang good going 55 miles an hour. And I think if I could get this caliper unstuck, she'll be ready for the road. Well, you know, maybe after I replace the hood. I'm kind of digging the, you know, the, the strap on the hood. It matches the paint. Yep, she is not going anywhere right now. I gotta be honest, the caliper looks like it's sitting a little crooked on the spindle and uh, could probably throw some pads on this one. Probably do that later. Backside looks good. Front side looks a little, a little low there, but uh, this, one's, uh, this one's throwing me for a loop. So I've done a lot of GM brakes in my time. A lot of it has been half ton trucks though, but on my one ton OBS, the calipers bolt up to the spindles just like a half ton truck. So check this out. Normally you'd have a fastener that goes from the caliper into the spindle on the backside, either an Allen key, maybe a bolt or something. There's no fasteners right here. And the only thing I could find is this guy. So uh, I'm not too familiar with this setup. I'm gonna see if I can take that fastener off, maybe slide the caliper off and then push the piston back in. But I just, again, I haven't worked on a truck that has this brake set up yet. So that one kind of throwing me for a loop a little bit. Yeah, that was it. That was weird, man. All right, come on, baby. Yeah, this pad's a little, a little wore out there. Oh man, I'm bending that. Oh, need something a little heavier duty. Well, I got quite a bit of pressure on that caliper with my uh, hydraulic press kit here, and uh, it is not budging, dude. Even giving it some love taps, trying to loosen that piston up a little bit. Nothing. Yep, it's got a lot of pressure on it. Just not budging. Not budging. I'm gonna crack this bleeder and see what happens. Nothing. I need to try to get a little straighter on. Our piston might be stuck in there. Cool, 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 cool. Well, that caliper is seized. I had an incredible amount of force trying to get that piston to go back in there and it was not budging. I fired the truck up, tried to get the piston to come out by pushing on the brakes. It's not going in or coming out. So she's, uh, I think she's toast. So I'm gonna order some new calipers for this truck and I've run out of time this weekend to work on this truck and get it running and driving. I was so freaking close, but we were able to get it around the block under its own power and uh, got it up to some cruising speeds. And I'm feeling really, really good about this one. Just got to get the brake styled in. And I think we got a daily driver on our hands. She ain't much to look at, but she's got a lot of personality. Anyway, guys and gals, if you enjoyed watching me struggle during this video, I want to check this one out over here. Or if you want to see some of the show coverage I do, why don't you check this one out over there? Or if you want to subscribe to the channel, well, that would be freaking awesome. Uh, as always, I appreciate y'all hanging around and watching this one. I'll see you in the next video. All right, let's get some parts on order.